Hey everybody, I'm Chris Short. I'm here with the one and only Lucas Chelstrom. And we had an interesting discussion here a few minutes ago. Um, you know, Lucas is working on why Kubernetes is the way it is. And I'm super curious what your findings are. We mentioned, you know, you mentioned like a taxi driver. You yeah, know, yeah. Take, take me to X place versus take me 50 kilometers south. Yeah, yeah. Like, why is Kubernetes the way it is? In, so, in yeah. your findings so far, I guess, is the best way to frame that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. definitely. Yeah. It is. So, <laughs> I'll, I'll have a talk tomorrow about, about this as well. So, Thursday at 5.15, we'll go kind of into more depth about mm -hmm. this. But uh, what I've been researching the, the latest couple of months is it just that, like, we, we take some of the things kind of almost for granted these days with Absolutely. Kubernetes, like yeah. we have all kinds of, of fancy concepts on how to do things. And, and um, I started wondering, like, why do we do the things we do? Hmm. And uh, <laughs> it's good every now and then to, I guess, go yeah, back ask and why. Then, yeah, yeah. <laughs> go back and see. Um, and, uh, and the really interesting, I found a lot of, a lot of interesting things, but the, the kind of key, key part of, of what we, why we do what we do in Kubernetes is that we've learned from failure. Yes. And we have learned from that the world is not as easy or like simple as we think it is, right? No. So we, <laughs> we see a server, we see that, oh yeah, that's going to do, you know, if I make it do a command, then it's always going to work, but it's not. Right. I think there will be failures, there will be kind of chaos. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and technically it is chaos in systems. Yeah, lot, yeah. Because it's really just electrons moving around. At some point yes. in time we have yeah. physics, yeah. right? <laughs> That's part of the discussion we had a little bit earlier is physics play a role. Yeah. And inside any system, you're going to have some physical limitation. Yes, right? yes. The, the servers are not isolated from the rest of the world. They are no, they're, they're they're obeying, the same, yeah, yep. they're <laughs> obeying the same rules. And, and the taxi driver example is, is like uh, in Kubernetes, we have got kind of seen this model over and over again where, where you kind of you measure where where are you so like yeah. what what and then and then kind of where are you what is your current state right and once you know that of any system be it a container or be it a dns records mm -hmm. or be it some security policy right. it can be really whatever um then you will want to know that okay i'm here mm -hmm. but where do i want to go right so with with GitOps, for example, then you start, say you start from nothing. Right. You, you have nothing, your actual state is nothing, and then you look at your Git repo and say that, okay, this is where I want to go. Mm -hmm. Here I have all the things declared that I want to have a load balancer and I want to have a pod and uh, like two all different, the kind Two of, different environments, yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. All, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, then, it, then you start measuring, like right. what is the difference between actual state and the, the desired state, and that's really the same thing. Like, if you're calling a taxi, right. you're, you're saying that, okay, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not here. at KubeCon, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want to go to the city later. <laughs> right. So then you have an actual state and you have a desired state. <laughs> right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, Like the app, taxi here, <laughs> take me there. Yes, yes. But the, the kind of funny thing is that when you, even though you have a plan, an action plan, so you mm -hmm. do the difference between these coordinates, uh, you have an action plan, it might not, you know, work out. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, maybe the My, taxi doesn't show up. Yeah. <laughs> maybe the tech, like yesterday, for example, maybe mm. the taxi drops you off a uh, half mile too far from your hotel. Yes, yes. Right? Like, <laughs> you know. Or maybe there's a the roadblock somewhere. It right. might be many different things. Like a yeah. burning dump truck this morning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that is, that is really like, so, so we, we have an action plan, we do the action. Uh, and now I'm the target system if I want to get transported. Right. Um, and and then, then we see that, okay, what is now the state? Say that the, the road, there was a roadblock. Mm -hmm. um, I can't get any further than, than halfway. Um, now we do kind of, we report back. So, because mm -hmm. I, you know, I want to say I was, was about to, to meet someone in the city when I'm going back. Right. Uh, then I need to, you know, text them and say, yeah. that, okay, oh, I'm, I'm late. Yeah, I'm late. I'm late. Um, I don't get anywhere. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> my desired state didn't actually end up the way I oh, wanted no. it to go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that is the same thing. As a, so, so now the controller, you know, in the controller model of Kubernetes, like, it's the same thing. You post back status mm -hmm. to Kubernetes and say that, oh, you know, I wanted to 
uh, give you this this um, I wanted to scale up from from three replicas to five, mm -hmm. but I couldn't because there was no more resources in the right. cloud exactly. or something like that. Yeah. There was no availability. I had, so, I had no auto scaling yeah. setup. I had there's there's no nothing I can do. All the compute was yeah. consumed. Yeah. All the That's RAM is gone. <laughs> The disk is full. <laughs> chaos ensues, right? Yes, like, yes. And, and in Kubernetes land, that chaos is just continuously trying to reconcile that yeah, state, yeah. right? So, it, which means that if I if I didn't, the, the cab just left me at the wrong right, spot, right? right? Like <laughs> you get part of the you get yeah. part of that desired state, yeah. So, but you're not in it. No, no. <laughs> and then say so then then the kind of funny thing. So then I call a new cab. Mm -hmm. uh, and say that take me from the roadblock now to, to the place I want to go. Right. Uh, but saying that it gets even messier because say that now I, I have the, the action plan again, mm -hmm. but meanwhile we're driving, then the friend goes to another hotel. Oh no. You know, then, then, yeah. yeah. Then, then the desired state moves while I'm doing the corrective action. Mm -hmm. Which means that then when I arrive at the hotel, then later with the second cab, it's, I'm going to be there all alone. <laughs> Right, you're going to be there by yourself, yeah. or get another cab yeah. to go fix yeah. the problem so, of the desired state <laughs> exactly. not being where you want so, it. So now, when we do the se the third time around, we check that am I at the desired state? Right. No, I'm not because now the it has changed, and then I do us need to do a second. So that is one of the, the kind of intuitive ways of looking at the Kubernetes controller model. That is what it does, and kind of a real world example mm -hmm. of, of why we need to we need to always continue reconciling and always always kind of see, check where are we, how do we get to where we want yeah, to be. Yeah, because for you know, a good example is that pod might have moved mm -hmm. during your attempt to correct exactly. some error. Exactly. Right? So, <clears throat> so now we're at the state where, okay, physics matter. Mm -hmm. and, and we've hit this part of the discussion where latency and then entropy can mm -hmm. be introduced very easily, yeah, right? Yeah. Because there's all kinds of places in a computer and a network and in Kubernetes where latency occurs. <laughs> yes. Right? Yes, like, yeah. And that is increasing probability of missing the mark, right? Mm -hmm. I'll just put absolutely. it like that. Yeah, absolutely. And so the kind of, if we take entropy first, that is kind of the funny funny thing you, you we all have this where we, you know, come to the desk. Mm -hmm. We clean the desk on Friday, right? Right. Uh, and then Before I go home yeah. today, this is clean. It's yeah. going to be beautiful all the next week. All yes. week long. Yeah. And, and then I come there on Monday, it's all clean on the, on the table. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, let's, let's go. Uh, but then on Friday, you know, you then it's going to be... papers on one side. <laughs> you've got like four coffee cups that you forgot to wash over here. Yes, yeah, exactly. You can't find your phone anymore. Yeah. yeah. You don't know where anything is. <laughs> exactly. So, so what has happened? Well, the, the, we had some orderly state in the beginning of the week on Monday. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we were all good, but then uh, we had chaos at the end of the week. Right. And, and that is interesting because, um, you know, it happens to servers as well. We, we installed a server for the first time. We know it's, it's shiny. Slide that thing yeah, in. Yeah, slide it in. Feel that it click. Yeah. Screw it in. <laughs> Yeah. Get those 10 gig connections going. Yeah, exactly. Feels great when you're done, but oh, wait yeah. a minute. There's in, software in a week, that has to land yeah. here. <laughs> and in a week, it's going to be the, the fan is going to be, you know, maybe, maybe a bit more time, but in a week, the, the fan is all, you know, dusty and yeah. it's like. Uh, the, now, <laughs> now there's more latency because oh, the yeah. fan's slower and heat dissipation and oh, yeah. you know. It's, Chaos has been short. Like, yeah. and, and that is kind of, these kind of things, they actually have a, a name. And, and that is the second law of thermodynamics. Okay. Uh, the, it, it actually is called entropy and yeah. information theory. Mm -hmm. And if we go to a kind of physics side and, and just theoretical physics, and, and it just says that, you know, like everything in the universe, regardless, like it or not, becomes spontaneously mm -hmm. more chaotic. Right. So we, we start with the order. At, in a week, we're going to have chaos. Right. In a year, we're going to have even more chaos. Mm -hmm. But, of course, there's some things we can do. And then... Um, well, you can also remember that it's always good to remember that the order yes. that we, the, what we call order, is is kind of subjective. <laughs> yes, exactly. It is. It is not a cut and dry thing. Like order no. in your world could be different than order in yes. my world. Exactly. <laughs> Just try going cleaning your cleaning your friend's room. <laughs> right. Oh yeah. Like <laughs> me putting away the dishes at home. Yes. Where is everything? Says my wife. Yeah. Sorry, honey. <laughs> So, so it's kind of, it, it's really 
important to remember that, but it, it somehow it always gets gets more chaotic, and mm -hmm. and that's a, the second law of thermodynamics, and it, it serves to be the same thing. But what what do we need to do? Well, we know what to do, kind of from the real world. We, you know, if if uh, say the coffee cups, or the the dishes overflow at home when mm -hmm. you kind of make lunch, um, then you know what to do. You need to do the dishes. You know, to clean start it all the, uh, up. clean it all up, what and 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 then then the entropy, the kind of chaos, the measure of chaos. Uh, decreases. Right. So we, we kind of had it going up uh, mm -hmm. spontaneously, but then it decreases again when we right. uh, with time when we when we do the we dishes. reconcile right. the situation. Yeah. Right. And then the same thing with Kubernetes. So like Kubernetes, the server starts uh, all orderly, all good. Mm -hmm. Then in a week, very much chaos again. Right. Uh, but what Kubernetes does is it it try, it minimizes the the, the, mm -hmm. cha the chaos and makes it orderly again. So mm -hmm. Kubernetes is doing our dishes for us actually. Well, that's an interesting yeah. concept. Yeah. Because it feeds it all the time, like with kind of dirty servers. Yeah. <laughs> and Make us play a lot. Thank you, Kubernetes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and the best thing is Kubernetes kind of, we do the dishes maybe, well, I, I can only speak for myself, you know, every every three days at best. Mm. And <laughs> with Kubernetes, it's, it's operating 24 seven. Right. It, it's doing our dishes day or night. It moves at yeah. the speed of the audit wall, mm. right? Yeah, like, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it, event happens and then it starts action. doing yeah. doing things, and it does it in the, the taxi driver model. That see where we are, see where we want to go, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but the funny thing is, is even more that when uh, if this weren't enough mm -hmm. on the, the kind of why why Kubernetes is made this way, um, we still have even though we do an action, mm -hmm. we might not in the same way as we might not get to the the hotel in the taxi. Sure. When we're pressing the button, you know, in, regardless if, if it's Kubernetes that, that kind of presses the button of, of saying creating a DNS record or, or starting a container or mm -hmm. something like that, um, it might or might not work. There's always right. errors. I mean, Crash back off with yeah. anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Golang developers know this well, you know, from every single <laughs> <laughs> function call you have, you have if error, not nil. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So, a lot so, of boilerplate. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So we, we need to always expect the errors, and that's why mm -hmm. Kubernetes kind of keeps on doing doing its thing twenty four seven. Right, and and it keeps kind of our, they are prepared for the errors, and they're prepared for the, the kind of things will be messy, mm -hmm. and things will be random as well. So yeah. although you say that you had a thing the way you say that a thousand web servers, yeah. I want to run a thousand web servers, right? The Kubernetes starts spinning them up. Okay, mm -hmm. so the one two three four five six, then maybe. By the time you hit a thousand, right, the first ones have crashed. Maybe. Yeah. So, or maybe, although you did exactly the same command in creating a container, mm -hmm. maybe just five percent of those fifty of right. a thousand, they for some reason they didn't work. Just yeah. fail for yeah, just random network error, yeah. packet drop, whatever. It could be the electron well, yeah. got messed with. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, <laughs> something something happened on the way, and we don't know why. Yeah. But we know that the. There is a risk always that although we do something which should be successful, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it might not be. Right. Um, and we need to prepare ourselves for that. That there is randomness and vulnerability in, in all kinds of operations. Right. And um, and that is also kind of with this control, Kubernetes controller model, it's built in because we, we always check for it. We, if the if the fifty you know failed the first time around Kubernetes render, we can try again. We try again in, in thirty seconds. Okay. Or something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's say it gets twenty five of them. And then yeah. I'll try again. Yeah, and we'll exactly. get the next twenty-five. Yeah. So hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of the eventual consistency as well that we right. kind of get into, and, and that's a, then the last concept uh, that we were talking about latency, right. and and um, then then Kubernetes is, is designed in a way that actually takes this into account. So to take a practical example, um, you have to um, well so start with persons. So so like um, mm -hmm. uh, person A and person B. And now there comes a message, a letter or something, to something. person B. Yeah. Okay, so if, if person B wants to say this to A, mm -hmm. um, are they going to do it, are they able to do it physically, instantaneously? So at the same time, right. B reads can the letter. Can they read and speak at the yeah. same time? Yeah, can, can they can actually like transform the exact message <laughs> to A at the same time they're, they're, they're reading, reading it? it. No, yeah. there will always be a small delay. Right. Always, even though you ran to your friend the fastest you right. can. You ran to your friend and you start <laughs> yeah. speed reading this thing to your friend. There's well, still delay. Yeah, there there will there be delay. There is latency. Yeah. yeah. So so even though we have so we have two servers now, same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, one message comes into server B, 
it will always take some small amount of time to, to communicate what mm -hmm. they now know to server A. Right. And, um, and this has consequences. It, it's, it's kind of latency is, is otherwise, you know, a, a pretty known concept. And then we kind of, we know that when we're pressing the, the you know, writing a URL into, yeah. into a browser, it will, <laughs> it will take, yeah, it will take some enter, time, yeah. And it does a DNS lookup, and yeah. it's an HTTP <laughs> server, and it gets an OK, and then a page <laughs> is rendered, and then JavaScript runs, yeah. and da, 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 da. We yeah. know of latency from, from the real world, and we know it Absolutely. exists, but we think that we can still, we haven't maybe taught in distributed systems that, that often that there actually is no consistency that is immediate. To right. say that we would have now the same situation and we would have immediate direct consistency exactly at the same time. Then wow. at, the, at the same time it gets to be... It's like I, then, I hit save yeah. in VS Code and then all yeah. of a sudden my cluster's exactly how I exactly, want it. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> there, there will be, but if there would be infinite kind of mm -hmm. uh, light speed, then, then we could actually have that they know it at the same time. But there is no such thing. Yeah. Light is always... In, by, by light, there's also information delay in all ways. Mm -hmm. There's always, for information to travel from one place to another, it's limited by light speed, mm -hmm. at best. And um, this way, Kubernetes actually, you know, accounts for this too. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it, it's quite amazing. So, so it, it's uh, one of the... <laughs> One of the analogies we make, mm -hmm. uh, and now I don't want any, anyone feeling scared from this, but uh, there is this uh, notion of that airplanes can actually turn off their engines yeah. while, they're, while they're running. In theory. Yeah, in yeah. theory. Yeah. Uh, and they can just glide, you know, and, and then keep on doing what they need to. Mm -hmm. mm, and the same way Kubernetes was designed. Right. And, and so you can, you can remove the control plane for a short amount of time, sure. com completely disconnected. Right. Your, your nodes, Those nodes will still... Yeah. Be doing they will, their yeah. thing, yeah. They, your applications won't not notice anything. Mm -mm. The only until you try to introduce yeah, a change. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course, well, if you try to <laughs> do a change, then, then things will be a bit bad. Yeah, <laughs> a bit worse. But but like they they won't have removing the control plane won't have any direct effect on the, the what is happening. In the same way as like shutting the engines off in an airplane will don't, not have a direct effect. But of course, right. if you would on the long term, <laughs> yeah. then it would... Eventually, the yeah. glide slope gets down to the ground. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you don't want to do it too, uh, <laughs> for too long, mm -hmm. but it is kind of for short periods of time that is actually... Get away with yeah. It. yeah. So Kubernetes actually favors local reconciliation. Mm -hmm. So it, it favors this kind of taxi driver model loop actually locally on the node. Yeah. Because then the latency is, is minimized. We're mm -hmm. really close because we have an kind of in inevitable uh, latency when doing things. We are as close as possible in the node, so the node engine, the kubelet in Kubernetes, mm -hmm. can actually can start the containers and keep the containers running without anyone else disturbing it. So, nice. so kind of the, the, the API, the control plane can go down for some, some time, it doesn't matter, it will still do it. Um, and this is actually in contrary to, to many proper systems, which right. actually favored more that we have a really long link. We have a like a long latency mm -hmm. uh, between like transatlantic cable yeah, latency. Right? Exactly. Like, yeah. And we're trying to do something uh, and inspect the state on the other side of the Atlantic, mm -hmm. but while we when we get the message back, the it state might have changed. Change. Yeah. Yes. It could <laughs> have changed four times by the time you yeah, get the message yeah. back. Yeah. So then we do the wrong command. Right. But with Kubernetes, by, by minimizing and kind of doing the reconciliation really closely to what it's mm -hmm. kind of controlling, that actually kind of gives us better probabilities of success. It's exactly. not like eventually we'll get there, but it, it kind of hopefully goes faster then as well. We're minimizing the chance of error. Yeah. 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 So, so the, the consistency will always be with some probability right. after some time. You know, it, that kind of goes in line with some DevOps principles of like reducing... Uh, like the harm of failure, mm -hmm. right? Like making failure a normal thing, yeah. Right, like yeah. and embracing that. Well, Kubernetes says, okay, something failed, I'll immediately do something. Yeah, yeah. Whereas opposed to like getting woken up by pager duty, and yeah. Like broccoli walking across your house to your computer, and then <laughs> logging in, and then realizing, okay, this thing's busted, but what's the underlying reason for that? Mm -hmm. well, Kubernetes is looking at that, you know, group Directly. originally in kind yeah. and saying yeah. it needs to look like this, and it's not. Put it like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it's so really interesting. These, these kind of things are, are actually just examples of how the, the kind of physical world, elements from the physical world, which we kind of 
familiar with from from our ordinary life, like taking a cab or mm-hmm. or <laughs> organizing our desk, doing the dishes, yeah. uh, talking to friends. Um, these have real practical implications for how we should or should not design our, our server systems. Yeah. Um, and although many of them are quite, you know, when you hear them, mm-hmm. then it's like, oh, it makes sense. Right. It's kind of this. It makes sense to kind of try again if you have an yeah, error. Yeah, exactly. But, but it's not obvious when you're the designer of a system, it's not obvious that you know how, how to do that. And actually, I think it's not obvious to always think about failure because there will always be failure in those places Somewhere, that, you, yeah. that, you, you, that you didn't expect. Mm-hmm. At you, scale, yeah. <laughs> there will be unexpected failure. Absolutely. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's only so many nodes that you can actually mm-hmm. successfully upgrade yeah. because of yeah. probability, right? Yeah. Like, it's, it's something will fail if you're at a certain scale. Yeah. And then you just keep trying. Yep. That's the beautiful part about Kubernetes mm-hmm. is that it will keep trying until it's like, okay, I can't fix this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, whatever that time out you set is. Yes, yes. So, and then in the kind of uh, grand scheme of things, um, these, these philosophies are also kind of, uh, called like uh, promise theory and then control theory. Mm-hmm. And that's uh, the, where some of this kind of theory is coming from. And, mm. and uh, well, then of course, all of the, the physics that we have kind of covered so far and the laws and that kind of stuff. And um, well, then finally, uh, this is, we can conclude with that, that this is like, um, why this is giving actually some some example of why Kubernetes is right. working the way it does and uh, the way it is and then kind of um, when you're seeing at Kubernetes now it might hopefully it, it kind of looks more sane yeah and, and the the interesting thing is that if you're at a small scale mm-hmm. uh, say you have tree servers or something like that right. you will be bound to the same laws yeah. you will have failures at some point as well. right. But it will just take maybe a bit more time mm-hmm. for you before you notice that. So mm-hmm. say it goes a month before right. the hell just breaks loose. Uh, <laughs> but if or you're, should have restarted yeah. that part a week ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if, if you're Google or someone, you know, like right. a, running a large system, then, you know, if you have a, a million nodes, mm-hmm. then it will <laughs> break loose directly. <laughs> right. There will always be something failing directly. Yeah. So then you will see it and you will learn to design for it uh, from the upfront. But it, you're not safe uh, and you're not kind of immune to failure, although, or, although you have a small system. So that's right. why it kind of makes sense to use Kubernetes or if you're not using Kubernetes, that's also fine, but at least use something else which obeys the same principles. Mm-hmm. It's designed for these same kind of practices. Right, like continuous, um, continuously reconciling, continuously yes, yes. Tr- checking, checking their, yeah, like, health do, checks, yeah. that kind of thing. You want yeah. all that. Declaring, like, because it's also funny that if I never, if I do the dishes, mm-hmm. right, then I, I, we said that the, the kind of order is subjective. Mm-hmm. So, oh yeah, yeah like so, your idea of doing yeah. dishes might be different than mine. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, so then the, the kind of, the, my desired state of, of kind of my kitchen, how I want the kitchen to look when it's clean, mm-hmm. might be different from yours. Mm-hmm. So that's why it's so important to kind of, this is, you're declaring something. You're declaratively saying that this is a clean kitchen. Mm-hmm. This is what it looks like. So it's really important to kind of define that and yes. say that. Like, here is my view of, of how right. order looks like. <laughs> that, I mean, that's... So it's one a, of the principles which are really important. Yeah, I mean, that's... it. The, when you get to thinking about it really deeply, right? Mm. Like you're talking about physics mm. and electrons and whatever that yeah, is yeah. going to be, you know, environmental effects will impact mm. that. Mm. Uh, you know, you pulling a cable out will impact that. Yes, you, yes. you know, <laughs> somebody in the data center tripping over something. Yes. <laughs> and you know, a butterfly flaps its wings and your Kubernetes cluster is gone. Yeah, right? yeah. Like some, some kind of theory like that. The, the this has been very enlightening just talking with you today. So I really yeah, appreciate it. You're doing a talk at KubeCon tomorrow? Yes. Tomorrow at 5.15, uh, we'll go more into these kind of concepts. Nice. And um, if you're even more interested than, uh, than just watching the talk, uh, tomorrow there's also my, my thesis. Okay. So bachelor thesis from where I kind of got the headspace, got the time to actually think about this. Like, It's not something that, you know, was just like one day just dropped right. down. Yeah. It's, a, it's a process of kind of thinking about it a longer period of time and looking also at what our people have done, right. uh, what, what is in the literature. So, mm-hmm. so in the bachelor thesis, which is uh, published at my GitHub, so github.com slash luxus, 
L U X A S. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, so <laughs> Lucas with an X is Lucas, actually Lucas with an yeah, X. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Coming actually from me mistyping with X and C. Ooh, is that? Is that yes. how that? Wow. Yes. <laughs> that's a cool name though, right? Yes. Like, <laughs> that's kind of funny actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're close to each other. So that's a good yeah, artist that name. Works. Yeah. <laughs> so Lucas says Lucas with an X and then slash research. So then cool. there you find a PDF, uh, all the details. Yeah, I'm going to read this. <laughs> this has been a mind-blowing conversation. This is, and you only caught a little bit of it because he had to yes. explain it to me to some extent before we started filming. So yeah, <laughs> go read the paper if this interests you. Check out his talk. It'll, yep. be, it'll be online after Keep Gone. Yeah, it's on it'll YouTube be, later. Yeah, yes. so thank you, Lucas, so much for sitting down with me. I really appreciate it. And uh, look forward to hearing your talk and reading your yeah. paper. Cool. Thank you.